Thanks very much. Uh, hello. Yes, I'm not alone, <laughs> honestly. Uh, there's somebody else over there and the other members of the project team who, who can't be here, but some who are, who are watching the live stream and uh, hopefully cheering me on uh, with their popcorn or whatever it is they're doing. Um, anyway, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to talk about the All Aboard project. Uh, it has a very grandiose sounding title, but basically what we're trying to do in this project is map out a digital skills framework for Irish higher education. And that's a framework that tries to capture the different kind of skills, knowledge and attributes that uh, are relevant and useful and important and helpful for people uh, who are either studying or working in higher education. And we mean everybody. That's part of the, the reason why we call it All Aboard. So we're talking about staff and students, and we're talking not just about academic staff, but other kinds of staff in the institutions as well, uh, administrators, technicians, everyone. So it is meant to be an all-encompassing framework that gives people some way of seeing and ma of making sense of this complex environment that we're, we're currently working or studying in. Um, there are a number of different partners there. I've put the names up of the, of the main people who are working on the project. Um, it's NUI Galway, UL, UCD, and Mary Immaculate College, uh, in case you're not familiar with all the, the acronyms there. Uh, so I'd like to um, just thank all those colleagues for actually being a great team to work with, I have to say. Uh, it's been really enjoyable, that, that aspect of the project, just, just getting to know people a lot better. Uh, we've all taken on different roles in the project, and uh, some of that might become clear as we go through, but we, we do discuss everything uh, frequently, and uh, we use a, a project management site that's turned out to be very helpful. Anyway, let's cut to the chase. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, in a sense, we're in our startup phase, or we're, we've finished our startup phase, uh, we've recruited project workers. This is a two-year project, remember. Uh, there was a bit of a delay in starting to do with all sorts of, uh, what can I say, because I'm on camera, uh, administrative issues within the bureaucracy of institutions. But they're resolved now. So we do have access to the money, uh, and we do have people employed. Uh, and I'd like to thank the HR uh, departments for, for facilitating that eventually. Um, so we've got a couple of people working full-time on the project uh, since February. Um, we're using Basecamp, which is a, a readily available commercial product for our project management, uh, and it's been very, very useful, I think. We've engaged in this startup phase since January, February, uh, in scoping uh, our, our project a little bit more detail, um, consulting with as many people as possible, because we know there's a huge amount of expertise. There's been a lot of great work done in this field. Uh, we're interested in digital skills. We're interested in digital literacies. And also, of course, uh, we're going to, as we'll see later on, we're going to be using digital badges to try and look at the scope they have for uh, recognizing and uh, demonstrating achievement. Um, so we've been working with the Badge Alliance. Uh, we've been in touch uh, with people in the MacArthur Foundation who are supporting the Badge Alliance's work. Uh, we're in touch with people in the Mozilla Foundation and, and so on. And we've learned a great deal, uh, it has to be said, as many people do uh, in this country. We've learned a great deal from looking over the water at JISC and the fantastic projects that have run there over, over many years. Uh, we paid particular attention to the recent work of Helen Beaton, uh, and it was interesting to see her revising of the kind of digital capabilities framework there in the UK just in, uh, in recent months, and that's been very helpful for us. But anyway, I'll, I'll skip on. We can come back to that if, if needs be. We've been busy in participating and in facilitating a whole range of events and activities over the past few months because we're really trying to get across to people that this is all aboard. In other words, we want everybody to feel some sense of ownership of this framework as it emerges and of the tools and resources that we produce. So we participated in Open Education Week. A colleague of ours ran a workshop in Galway, uh, which we also participated in from the perspective of the All Aboard project. We've been involved in other activities that have uh, arisen over the last few months, and we've made sure that we've got our uh, word out about the project. But more importantly, we've been trying to get people to contribute. And one of the things we've done an awful lot of um, in all of these events is we bring the uh, packs of these little postcards with us where we ask people to just write their ideas on the back, and we collect them. So when we go to conferences and workshops, we hand out hundreds of these, or however many we need, and we ask people to give us their ideas about what they think should be in a national digital skills framework. What skills would they themselves like to develop 
or what do they think students and graduates should be capable of in this day and age? And we gather these in, and we have an online version as well, of course, but we find that actually this you know, handheld version uh, goes down quite well, and we've had hundreds of, of uh, these cards returned to us with ideas, many really good ideas, I have to say. Um, we've also been working with uh, numbers of academics and uh, some student representatives as well in developing pilot groups for the badges implementation. Uh, we've also been issuing badges, which we'll talk about shortly, uh, trying to test out the use of badges. Uh, of course, when you talk about digital badges, you always have to remember that not everyone likes that terminology. So as I've said before, when we work with people, for example, HR professionals, we talk about micro-credentials, that sort of thing. This, that seems to go down a little bit better with people than badges. Uh, and when we talk with senior managers, we talk about you know, some form of uh, credentialing of, of graduate attributes and so forth. So we, we, we're sensitive to those different subcultures that are out there, including, including our own. Um, the big event really was last week, and that's why I'm still a little bit tired perhaps. Uh, we had a conference on Friday uh, called Getting Real About Virtual Learning, and that's where we launched the first draft of our digital skills framework. Uh, and we had lots of really interesting discussions there, and there were over 260 uh, participants. So that was a, a very useful uh, um, event, and it's been very helpful for us. So what we've been doing is trying to gather information from people, um, just individuals, as I say, on these postcards, also, of course, making great use of, of the literature out there and trying to, to get ideas to, to gather them together. In terms of outputs and outcomes, and I apologise for the, uh, the amount of text on this, uh, I'm overcompensating for Gavin's um, really beautiful images, so I thought I'd put some words up instead, <laughs> put too many of them. But basically, it's a summary of some of the key outputs so far. We have a project website. We had that set up right at the beginning. Uh, and we're using that as our main communications tool. And we have an application server for the, the, the badging systems, which we've been experimenting with. Uh, we've undertaken a review of digital skills and literacies projects and frameworks. And that's really our partners in uh, the University of Limerick in the library uh, sec section there that have uh, written this report. We've also reviewed badging implementations and the technologies behind that. Uh, we've contributed to the national consultation on the professional development framework for those who teach in higher education. Uh, and also, as I say, we've also been issuing badges and pilot implementations. So just in the, recently we issued, for example, 903 badges for student volunteers uh, in NUI Galway. When I say student volunteers, I mean people who are actually, as students, engaging in volunteering in the wider community. It's a long-standing um, aspect of NUI Galway student experience uh, and so students in the past have been given certificates and now we're actually uh, issuing also digital badges uh, with these students. We've used them also for teaching and learning, a graduate teaching assistant module. We issued 360 badges just uh, recently as well and uh, last month uh, and, uh, and several others as well. But anyway, let's get down to the, the digital skills framework and let you know where, where it's at at the moment. As I say, we've, we've tried to gather in lots of information. We've tried to emphasize the fact that obviously we're in a, a, a digital era that we're living and working in, and we're trying to get away from the notion that we should come up with a framework that's just about graduate attributes and student skills, or it's just about academic staff training and development. We're saying, well, look, technologies are around us all the time, and lots of technologies that might not be covered in a traditional TEL course or a traditional student uh, attributes framework you know, we're using all the time in, in, in teaching and learning and in organizing our courses and in making sense of our study. So we want to try and open things out a little bit. As I say, we gathered ideas from people and uh, we threw them all down, tried to make sense of them, lots and lots of great suggestions. Uh, and as we tried to kind of rearrange them um, and make sense of them, okay, slow animation there. Oops, it jumped. <laughs> Uh, it's still a very, very complex technological landscape. So the idea that we've come up with in the project, and, and credit to Blonet McSharry, who works on this full time, uh, she thought that one way of potentially, an, a, a nice metaphor for navigating our way through this complex uh, environment was perhaps that of a, a, of a metro map with, with a number of different key lines uh, that you can follow, depending on what you're interested in. The stations there are really just some of the suggestions that people have given us. And there's still 
subject to change, but it's to try and capture this idea that it is possible to make sense. It is possible to navigate your way around. And we do have intersections and crossovers between the different aspects um, of digital technologies and their application. So that's the rationale behind this. I've got um, a copy of this actually. Not for everyone in the audience, that's sorry. Um, so if you're a postcard to everyone in the audience, and I'm still looking for ideas and advice and suggestions. Uh, so the conference programme that we had last week unfolds to help you find your way through. Now, that might seem a little bit overcomplicated because there's lots and lots and lots of stops along the way, lots and lots of stations. But basically, the key aspects of the framework are summed up in this diagram here. That essentially, we've got these main high-level themes, uh, very, very similar to other skills frameworks and technology, uh, literacy frameworks we know, but that's fine. Um, we thought very carefully about the wording and the labelling, but we're still open to discussion. But the main thing is that these are the key themes uh, around which that uh, more complex looking map is built. And we have definitions of these, which we've tried to make as broad as possible. Um, so we find the news, for example, we're talking about skills and literacies for information, but we're also talking about how it's for effective learning or research, scholarship, professional practices. So it's a framework for everyone. It's not just for students, not just for academic staff. It's trying to be uh, all-encompassing. So, anyway, the challenges. I mentioned some of them, the administrative ones. They're sorted. Um, student representation on the group. That's something we're, we're, we're going to push for a little bit more now. We recognize that we need a little bit more there. We had a, the timing was such that the, 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 the students who were keen to participate in the group were uh, representatives from Students' Union, and of course they had their, their elections in March, and so there's been a changeover, so there's new Student Union um, education conveners and that sort of thing, so, uh, but we're, we're, we're working on that, and that, that'll be sorted. Certainly there's been a lot of student input in some of the earlier discussions as well, and also our colleagues in Mary I have been working closely with students to get feedback. We, as I say, we really genuinely want to nurture this sense of ownership and participation, and we're doing our utmost to do that, both through this consultation phase, but later on as we start to develop materials as well. So that's something that we see as a great opportunity, part of our next step. Um, we're going to be producing training materials, that's one of the core aspects of, of the project as well, and the digital badges, and trying to work out how we can map some of these things together, looking, for example, at graduate attributes, and I know that's an area that many institutions are, are, are interested in, of course, uh, and it's something in particular our colleagues in UCD will be following up on in the coming year, and also uh, ourselves in NUI Galway will be looking at the graduate attributes that many institutions state and the extent to which they actually embrace embrace uh, the notion of being uh, a, a digitally confident citizen. And I think confidence is important as well. Uh, we're interested not just in people having a, a, a broad uh, awareness of technologies, but feeling sufficiently confident that they can actually begin to be creative as well. So the planning for the pilot implementations across institutions is the phase that we're in at the moment. We know that uh, Spreading awareness, sharing practice is really, really important. So we have plans also for a regular monthly uh, video podcast series uh, on technologies in education. Uh, and we want to make sure that that links with ongoing activities rather than clashes with them or reproduces them because there's lots of really good work being done. Similarly for the materials, a lot of the work will be about collating and sharing materials and not just inventing everything from scratch. Thanks. One of the things, though, that we are really excited about is that the second Teaching Enhancement Fund call talks about tell weeks in the different regions. And we think from the point of view of our project, that's a brilliant opportunity to share the framework, to develop the framework and the training materials, and also uh, in the badge aspects of the project, where we feel that we can uh, support those tell weeks by issuing badges, using uh, our own platforms and helping others to develop theirs as well, if needs be. As for top three benefits, the ones I've put down here at this stage that we're looking at, uh, I think genuinely, as I said, we'd like it to be a community-owned framework that sets off discussions 
across the sector and in institutions. Rather than some sort of abstracted policy document that gathers dust, uh, we want people to feel that they own this and that they can participate in its development. Uh, so we think that's a benefit because it'll help bring people uh, on board. Uh, the training and education resources, just as everybody else has mentioned here, we want to share those. Uh, and we're looking at routes for individual self-study, uh, not just for formal courses and providing materials for workshops. But we're looking at the notion that people can also build up their own individual profile and see the extent to which they feel comfortable with different aspects of the technologies and their applications. And finally, one of the benefits, I think, is this exploring this idea of digital badges or micro-credentials and seeing the extent to which they are realistic, what the practical uh, challenges and opportunities of badges really are uh, when we start using them on a reasonably large scale. Uh, so we would say that those are our top three benefits at the moment, but the main benefit is really to try and build up the digital capacity and the digital confidence of everybody in the higher education sector in Ireland. Thank you. So, Thanks. Thanks.